Friedrich Engels. I read it in college. I had to read Marx and Engels in college. And it was published originally in London in the German language as the Manifest der Kommunistischen Partei. And this was written just as the revolutions of 1848 began to erupt. And what it is is an analytical approach to the class struggle and the problems of capitalism and the capitalist mode of production. Now, what does that actually mean? It means nothing. Marx and Engels were two idiots. They were two spoiled, rotten, rich kids who didn't like other rich people. And they came up with an ideal world, of uh, an ideal view of the world, where the peasants who were working in the factories and on the f farms would own the factories and the farms. And at that time, everyone would have a wonderful life, these morons thought, the same way the trust funders on Pacific Heights think that the world will be great with the communist revolution as they walk around with uh, Black Panther, Black Power fist bumps, the white kids coming down off Pacific Heights, coming off a heroin high. But I'm getting distracted, and I don't want you to get distracted. How has that ever worked out when the peasants ran the factories? Has it ever worked out real well? I'm going to give you a microcosm, a little example of it. In Berkeley, California, there was once a, in the 1970s, there was a fervor after the 60s of, uh, for revolution. They opened up a big grocery store called the Co-op. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, again, the lame brain idiots at Harvard wanted communism. They wanted the workers, the supermarket clerks, to own the market. They opened up a co-op. How did the co-ops work out? Well, they didn't. They went out of business. Do you know why they went out of business? Because the workers couldn't manage the supermarkets. Moreover, the thievery was at an all-time high, just as it is in salad bars today from all of the left-wingers in this country who think it's their right to steal vegetables out of a salad bar because, man, they're ripping us off for that lettuce. I'll take some of my own. I'll stick my hand right in there. Well, you get the picture. So what does this have to do with last night? It has everything to do with last night. It has to do with the fact that Bernie Sanders is using the rhetoric of socialism slash communism, and he's resonating with the uneducated, pot-smoking morons amongst the youth. Make no mistake about it. This nice old man is a very dangerous man who could bring about fascism in the blink of an eye. You don't know that. What you don't understand is that he himself may not be this fascist dictator that we all sense is underneath the surface of that crumpled old suit. But he will surround himself with the most vicious people you could ever imagine. That's the way it's done. I'm trying to warn you, but you can't get it. And Clinton, of course, is completely out of the box. She's out of touch with reality. You may as well say she's finished. You'd say she's finished if she didn't steal the election. But there are indications owing to what occurred with the uh, delegate count. Did you see that story yet? That even though she lost, she had the very same number of delegates as the communist uh, on the left? You didn't see that one. How did that happen? Well, look into it. You may find uh, something that you're uh, not knowledgeable about. You know how many people died under communism in the last century? Do you know how many people died from the slave labor camps, from being sent to the gulag, for being politically incorrect? Do you know what the phrase politically incorrect actually means? You use it somewhat with a, a certain degree of chagrin, like, eh, it's funny, politically incorrect. Do you know who these monsters are who are trying to control your thoughts and your words and your deeds? Do you know what they want to do to you when they have total and absolute power? Do you know what they might do to you if this psychotic with the rumpled suit from the gutters of New York should become president? Many of you don't know because you are Americans who have grown up in a spoiled nation without any problems, with no history. You have no history. You are a new generation of brainwashed individuals who don't know anything about virtually anything. Well, I do. And I want to take some callers on this issue of mine today. Today's show is entitled Revolution Comes to America, where the soul of America itself is up for grabs. It's as clear as a bell. Whether you like him or not, and I happen to like him a lot, Trump represents America's hope. The Democrat Party, whoever they may select, the corrupt, aged, goiterous Hillary, or the psychotic, rumpled communist Bernie, these two represent the communist revolution. And again, I want to remind you, you may not understand what I'm saying to you. In the original Communist Manifesto by Marx and Engels, they wrote 
their ideas for how the capitalist society of their time would be replaced first by socialism and then finally by communism. Those who do not know their history are condemned to repeat it. And apparently the youth of America who are cheering this rumpled old de devil know nothing about history and they're condemned to repeat it. I'll be right back. Welcome back to the concluding minutes of the Savage Nation. I want to talk about uh, the Zika virus for a minute. There's an interesting article that just came out by the Associated Press entitled How Street Gangs Are Helping the Spread of Zika. It's a fascinating uh, marriage here of violence and stupidity. And they go to El Salvador, which has the highest number of cases, as you well know. You may not know this. This goes back to some brilliant man who tried to write a book uh, 25 years ago entitled Immigrants and Epidemics, but he was blocked by New York publishers who wouldn't touch the topic. Anyway, <laughs> El Salvador. For health workers battling Zika across much of Central America, the immediate menace is not the mosquitoes. It's the gangsters who control the streets and sometimes threaten their lives. Armed and well-organized street gangs known as Maras exert near total control over entire neighborhoods, using sentries to track everyone who comes and goes. In some cases, they deny access to health crews they suspect of working with police or a rival gang. So here is an example of immigrants who are coming into this country who are infected with Zika, who are bringing the Zika virus in because in their own country the state is absent. The state has been replaced by the gang. Did you know that more than 7,000 suspected cases of Zika have already been identified in El Salvador? Did you know that? Now, your government won't let you know that. Your government wants you to believe it, it, it suddenly appeared, it appeared in America out of spontaneous combustion, but it didn't appear as a result of spontaneous combustion. It appeared as a result of immigrants and epidemics. That's how it got into America. It's coming in through immigrants who are bringing a new epidemic. And so I want to guide you again so you don't think it's a fear tactic to something very real because you're going to be hearing more and more about this in the coming weeks and months, especially as we get into the warm weather. The mosquitoes are coming across, being brought across the border, and the disease itself is being brought across the border. And my little e-book, Diseases Without Borders, is a very important book for you to look at. And Michael Savage's Diseases Without Borders, Boosting Your Immunity Against Infectious Diseases from the Flu and Measles to Tuberculosis is an important book for a number of reasons, and I don't have to spell it out. With new and resurgent diseases resulting from unregulated immigration and a politicized public health system, Michael Savage sees the need for some changes, starting with the president and the Centers for Disease Control telling us the truth. Savage makes his case for the government to enforce travel bans, the use of quarantines, and the importance of proper border screenings. However, this is not a cure or treatment for any of these diseases. With TB, hepatitis, and Terravirus 68, Zika and other new diseases, uh, th disease threats emerging across the U.S. Savage will explain ways to fortify your immune system and defend against these and other diseases. Drawing from his extensive training, Savage examines the benefits of using specific nutrients to boost the human immune system, which in turn increases the odds of surviving a viral infection as well as preventing other diseases. And that's, that's the whole story. I recommend that you look into Diseases Without Borders, which finally became available uh, just yesterday. Henry on Dub at the win. I think the call screen has left the premises. Uh, line six, Mike on WFTL. What's your topic or comment, please? Yeah, I was going to say something about uh, medical education. My dad was a doctor. I'm a Ph.D. I've taught pre-meds. To get into medical school, you need one intro bio course, Two chems and one physics course. Are you wait? Say that again. Today, to become a doctor and to go to med school, what's the minimum requirement? One one year of general biology, two years of chemistry, inorganic and organic, and one year of physics and one year of calculus, and that's it. So that's to make sure that the stupidest amongst the children who want to be doctors can still become a doctor. No, that's to make sure that the people who the upper middle class who want their kids to be doctors don't get kicked out because they can't do science. So they'll, t they'll be English and oh. majors, go to medical school. When they go to medical school, 
instead of having one year of anatomy, which they used to have, it's half a year. Now, anatomy has... So, so how do they pass... How do they pass the MCATs to get in? Are there no longer any MCATs? No, there's MCATs, but MCATs don't have biology anymore. But what, what do they have? Uh, what do they have, sociology and an MCAT? Like, what no, is they, Bernie Sanders' uh, sartorial secrets? No, they don't have anatomy and physiology. To become a nurse, to get into nursing school, you have to have a year of anatomy and physiology in addition to everything else that you have to take. All right, so under Obama, he's melted down the medical profession. In other words, he liked the barefoot doctor like they had in, in rural China. What else is new under the sun? So he's also decimated the finest medical system in the world. They want as many doctors as, as they can get, no matter how dumb they are or however unqualified they are. That's great. Oh, my goodness. I can't imagine what this country's hospitals will look like in five, let alone ten years. Doctors gone wild under Barack Obama. Well, that's it for today. That's it for today. Trump won. Hillary lost. Bernie rises. Savage.